We are dreaming them into being. That's symbolic. But we can change what we are experiencing. Here we go. Let's go to Colleen in Red Bluff, California. Hello there, Colleen. Go ahead. Uh, this, is, this is Gordon. Well, hold on. I hit the wrong button. There you go, Colleen. <laughs> yeah, this is Colleen. There Thank you, you for taking my call on the program. Always a pleasure, okay? Thank you so much, George. Oh, Belinda Womack. Lessons from the 12 Archangels. They're all out there to help you. They're all out there to help you. And Gordon and Lakeland, sorry, hit the wrong button. Next time we're on open lines, let Tom know. We'll put you on right away. I got you all excited and we never got, I got you all excited and we never got to you. For Dan Galanti, Tom Danheiser, Lisa Lyon, Lex Lundwood, Sean Laudasur, Stephanie Smith, I'm George. George Norrie, somewhere out there on Coast to Coast AM. We'll see you on our next edition. Until then, be safe. As a matter of fact, the uh, president of ParanormalDate.com, Mark Rawlings, is going to be on the show because uh, he is involved in uh, that whole situation. It's going to be an amazing story. Well, let's go back to the phones. Uh, Tom's got a couple more texts he'll have for us for this hour. And uh, let's go to Gordon in Lakeland, Florida. Hello, Gordon. Good morning. Hey, um, thanks for putting me back on to make up for last night. You know, it was kind of good that I didn't get on last night because I have a, a huge problem, and I've been meaning to call and ask for y'all's help. All right. In the angel situation, those questions were important, but they were difficult and can wait. I, uh, my congressman, Dennis Ross, in, in Florida, Lakeland, between Tampa and Orlando, said something real unusual in a town hall meeting. It was public, and I tape-recorded it and it's posted on my website. He's a Republican, and we're supposed to be good, but we veered off. He admitted when I pinned him down, yeah, college students should get bankruptcy like everyone else does. And he said one step further, we shouldn't even be, uh, that would be a cure. And he said one step further, we shouldn't even have uh, taxpayer dollars guaranteeing these loans in the first place, place which is preventative. Mm -hmm. So you can see where I'm going with this. I'm, I wanted to ask you. Well, and, let, and let me just say one quick thing. And what you just mentioned was it, it is exempt to file bankruptcy to wipe out student loan debt. You can't do it in bankruptcy, well, and, and that's you what you were saying. It's almost impossible, so more or less you can't. Okay? Right. So it's almost it's possible, but it's real, real hard. So just let's say you can't. Exactly. Okay? The standards are next to impossible. Yeah, it's tough. Okay, so the bottom line is, um, so now the humanitarian side of it is, well, if all these criminals with credit cards that are drug users can get bankruptcy, and if these rich people get bankruptcy millions of times, then why can't a college student? But there's one other side of it, and that is that if the taxpayer dollars are guaranteeing these toxic predatory loans, college debt has surpassed credit card debt for the first time in history, and you have million-dollar presidents and million-dollar coaches. It's going to crash the U.S. dollar if we don't stop this. And college used to be free. Bernie Sanders, I'm a conservative, but Bernie Sanders is right. College used to be free in America for many colleges, and in Germany it is free. And if there's a good case for free college, how much more case is there to have the students to at least get bankruptcy as a curative and to get the tax dollars out to start lowering the loan limit mm -hmm. as a preventative measure. And I wanted to not only get your opinion, but I actually have audio up of that town hall meeting on my webpage, and I wanted your blessings and permission to throw it out because if Congress doesn't do anything, it's going to crash our economy. And I wanted your, your opinion on this. Check your email. I did email you. Okay. And I'm friends with Alan Collins. Okay, so, um, you know, you, Alan Collins is one of your guests. Oh, he's great when it comes to student loans. Yes, he, he enlightened me. I'm the smartest cat in the world, but I'm only <laughs> a cat. I'm, not, I'm passing myself off as a human. He was the one that showed me that returning bankruptcy would scare off the lenders, and it would lower the, the, uh, the tuition because the lenders would know they, they can't lend to the students, and the colleges and the banks would stop. I don't hate the colleges and the banks. I'm a Republican, okay? I'm a conservative. But look, they make enough money. This will save the taxpayer a dollar because there won't be any backing or guaranteeing of toxic loans that is now it's past credit card. Sure. Oh, it's 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 huge. Now, let, let me ask you the devil's advocate question here. Sure, by the way, ahead. and I want to preface it by saying I'm paying and help paying uh, college student loans for two of my kids. They go for it. Okay. But nobody forced my kids to go to school, to go to college. I didn't force them to do that. I encouraged them to go, and they went. And we have incurred student loan debt because we had them in college. So my question is, nobody forced all these kids to go to college, and they got this debt because they signed for it. Nobody forced them to sign for it. Right. Or 
Here's the devil's advocate portion of it. Sure. We still need an education. People want to go to college. It's almost like they're trapped. Darned if they do and darned if they don't. Yes, you're absolutely right. So that's that's that whole thing. They're well, trapped. The, devil, the, devil, the devil's advocate is on both sides. So I'll, I'll give you a correct answer to your question. First off, the student loans used to have bankruptcy, but they changed the rules of those loan contracts, and they violated the U.S. Constitution. And change, that's a violation. How would you like if you had an insurance policy, and then when you, you went to cash in, oops, they changed the rules. Yeah, you can't Actually, get your money. They not even tell the students that they're, the current students don't even have bankruptcy protection. That's deceptive uh, practices. And the third thing is there's a monopoly where, it's just like you said, if, if you don't go to college, you might be a burger flipper. And if you do go to college, you'll be in debt for, for life. My question, here's my question to you. If college was free in the past and it was the best in the world, how come it's so high now? And Bill Bennett with the Bennett Hypothesis and Ron Paul both said, when well, anytime you subsidize something, it goes up. And so I'm calling upon my congressman to not only put bankruptcy, which is the sword, the economic second amendment, back into the hands of the student to fend off as a curative measure, but also to get the college subsidies out. So when there's no subsidies, then they'll know that the students are not able to do that, and then the tuition will come down. It's so, got to come down, Gordon. Do you know what they pay college football coaches? Yeah, that's part of the problem, but that's also a symptom. So can I throw my websites out there? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I'm Gordon Wayne Watts, G-O-R-D-O-N-W-A-Y-N-E-W-A-T-T-S. And if you go to Gordon Wayne Watts, Dot com. That's HostGator. And if you have problems, go to GordonWatts.com. That's GoDaddy. I, if you have a flat tire on the information highway, and as soon as you go there, you'll see that Dennis Ross is a good guy. He, he one time did something like this before. And Speaker of the House, Marco Rubio, of the Florida Speaker of the House, back when he was in the, st the state house, he threw off Dennis Ross when he was a state rep for getting taxpayer dollars out of uh, Citizens Bank or something like that. And Dennis Ross really wants to do the right thing. He's a good guy. He um, he did a lot of good things that I can't go into for the sake of time, but they're in my editorial. And so you'll see Dennis Ross a smiling mug, and my web trackers will go off the charts. And, and let me ask you this, Gordon. Gordon Wayne Watts in Lakeland between Orlando and Tampa will have a million hits, and I have the professional I hope you do. I my hope website, you. Hit it as hard as you want. Now, let me ask you this, though. Why are you into this topic? Well, here's the thing. It, it, even though I have income-based repayment, and I paid 10% of discretionary income, which is 10% of zero for me. I'm protected, but the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. And I, I'm going to make a prophecy. I'm going to make a prediction, and my name is behind this. You know who I am. I'm a real person. If they don't put a stop to this, it will crash the U.S. dollar because second probably only to military spending or, or something like Social Security. This is the, the greatest uh, threat to our economy because the taxpayers back these predatory loans and the colleges charge huge amounts because they know the taxpayer backs it. Sure. If you get the taxpayer out of that, there's no skin in the game for them to do that, and there is skin in the game uh, or an incentive for them to stop being uh, pred predatory lending or subprime. The All right, give out, give out your website one more time. GordonWayneWatts.com is the, the host gator over in Texas where everything's bigger. All right, very good, Gordon. Thank you. Text message, Tom. What do we have back right there? In